On Koshy's Business Builders, are you doing it tough? You're not alone. This week, a doctor's advice on how to manage your mental health. Plus, the retired AFL player dishing up healthy meals and fighting the war on waste. And he overcame some huge hurdles. The founder of Zarafas Coffee shares his top tips for success. Hello and welcome to Koshi's Business Builders. Over the years, we've met so many inspirational business owners keen to share their stories of success. It's been great. Today though, we want to share a different type of story with you in an effort to help support anyone out there who might be doing it tough personally. Owning your own business comes with enormous personal stress. It can be tough, believe me, I've been through it. A successful entrepreneur once said to me, Koshi, you've never been in business until you've been to the brink, looked over the edge and come back. I thought he was just a grumpy old bugger until it happened to me. It affects your family, it affects your relationships, your whole mental well-being. So I want you to take in our next story. It's a story of inspiration and survival, and one that comes from a deeply personal place. Today, we're at a dairy farm just outside Warrigal South in Victoria's Gippsland region. The scenery here is stunning, sparking a real sense of well-being and calm. Unfortunately for dairy farmer owner Joe Maghetto, that hasn't always been the case. So can you give me a sense of what a typical day is like for you as a small business owner, as a farm owner? Uh, rise and shine about between quarter past and half past four each morning. Get up out of bed and I head towards the milking shed, which is a few hundred metres down the road. Start milking by quarter past five in the morning and milk them for a few hours and then during the day, it's just day-to-day -day farm duties, feeding cows, feeding calves, maintaining your property and 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 uh, milking again that afternoon, starting at uh, 3 o'clock and finishing about 5.30. So um, I understand that um, in recent times, you, things came unstuck a little bit and, and, and you had a difficult time. Yeah, I went through a tough time, I should say. I think it, 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 it stemmed from a lot of loneliness on the farm. You know, we live close to town here when there's a lot of close neighbours, but the isolation of working by yourself all the time and managing your property, and, and a dairy farmer's just not a person that milks cows. He's a, he's a vet, he's a, he's a mechanic, he's all these different types of bits and pieces that make up this one big picture of a farm. So, you know, the day-to-day -day pressures of all those type of things that soon build up on you, and it just sort of slowly, slowly grinding away at you and, 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 and comes to a head. Uh, so, Joe, I mean, the experience of, of mental health issues or depression, it's very different for everyone. Everyone has their own sort of pattern, their own way it, it unfolds. Um, if you're happy to, it would be, I think, really helpful for people to hear a little bit about what it was like when you're in the thick of it all. It was very dark. Mm -hmm. You know, you have very negative thoughts in your, in your head, which is a dangerous thing. Um, I definitely had those negative thoughts. Um, you always try and find a bright light at the end of the tunnel, but, you know, sometimes there's, the bright light's never there. You know, I, I thought of taking my own life plenty of times. You know, sometimes I still do today. Probably at the end of the day, there's probably two things that, that save me, and that's one of them is my kids. And, and the second one is the person that's going to find me doesn't deserve that. I mean, it sounds like it was a, a very um, dark time and, and we're so pleased that you went and got um, some help and, mm. and, that, and, and that you're open to talk about this issue. You know, at Beyond Blue, we really do encourage people to have the conversation when they're worried about family members. It seems like there's sort of a lot of barriers to putting up your hand or, or going and getting a bit of help. As a male farmer, I think it's male across the board. We, we, we're macho people. We want to keep things inside us. Um, and, and that was certainly, for me, a big factor for a number of years that I didn't really want to tell anybody because um, you think what they're going to 
you, you feel scared or you, be, you feel worried what they're going to say. And in the end, I, I was lucky enough to have a GP as my next door neighbour, which I get on really well. And um, I, I went and saw him and, and, and I've, I've been on the mend ever since. After the break, we find out what Joe and all of us business owners can do to help keep our mental health in check. Did you know small to medium-sized businesses are driving a surge in innovation across Australia? The latest NAB Labs Business Innovation Index reports an almost 5% jump in business changes this year. So what's inspiring employees to think outside the square? Half of the businesses surveyed agreed strong leadership has helped build a strong culture of innovation. So what exactly is changing in business? The report shows incremental innovations are taking place rather than radical changes. Leading business innovation experts say in this time of digitisation, it's essential business owners become self-disruptors. So if you haven't thought about making changes in your small business, it might be time to come up with an innovation strategy. For the full report, visit nab.com.au slash insights. Welcome back. Today we're at the home of Joe Maghetto, a dairy farmer from Victoria. He's bravely shared the story of his struggle with mental illness in an effort to raise all our awareness. Dr Grant Blaschke from Beyond Blue has come along to help Joe and others keep their mental health in check. So how, how common is mental illness in Australia? Mental health issues are actually remarkably common. Uh, so in Australia, in any one year, about one million people are experiencing depression and about two million are experiencing anxiety. Often family members are a little bit worried to ask about suicide because they think, well, oh, maybe I'll put the idea in someone's mind. But, but we know that's not the case. And, and, and it's fine to, to ask someone, how are you going? How are things going? And, and I think how you've described that you know, thinking about why you wouldn't take your own life was so important. And people should also be aware that there's an enormous amount of resources and help in the community now. Yeah. There's, you know, the Beyond Blue 24-hour helpline, there's Lifeline. In Australia, we've got a wonderful health system. You can go to your GP, you can get what's called a GP mental health plan, and that entitles you to some Medicare-funded, psychology appointments. So is there specific advice that small business owners can, can seek? Look, I think the issue with small businesses is that they have a lot of pressures on them. They carry a lot of responsibility because it really lands on them. On the Beyond Blue website, we have a link to what's called Heads Up, and it's really focused on workplaces. There's a whole section there for small businesses. I think some of the other really interesting information on the Heads Up website is how to make a mentally healthy workplace culture in a workplace. And so this is a shared responsibility of employers and employees. So in the future, what do I need to do to keep my mental health in check? So I think trying to create, as best you can, a boundary between work okay. and home. Yeah. Easy to say, hard to do when you're yeah. the one running the business, but getting together with other small business owners because you guys are really, and gals, are really sharing the same sort of pressures. Mm. You know, sometimes just to hear how other people are managing is really helpful. And then of course, as we've talked, if things are getting a bit more serious, you know, things like you're not sleeping, you, you can't stop worrying about work, you're obsessing about it the whole time, putting up your hand and maybe having a chat to your GP. And when people such as yourselves come out, that's actually worth a lot more than mm. me as a doctor talking about it. Yeah. Um, because they relate to you. Yeah. And they go, wow, if he can talk about it, yeah. well, maybe I should go and get some help. So Yeah, I, I strongly believe that. It's just taking that first step because at the end of the day, people want to listen, people love you and people care about you and you need to take that first step. Um, don't continue to bottle up inside like I did for a number of years. For me, it was just a weight off my shoulders. Blimey, I can relate to Joe. Some really great advice there from Grant Blaschke from Beyond Blue. And if you're doing it tough, 
or your partner is, there's always help out there. Pick up the phone to chat to someone at Beyond Blue or Lifeline. They have so many resources to help. Now to our pillars of success, helping you build solid foundations. This week, Inventium's Amantha Imba is talking innovation. Today's pillar of success focuses on creativity hacks for small business owners. Thinking of new ways to solve old problems can be tough, as can trying to out-innovate the competition. But here are three simple things that you can do to boost your creativity. One, go for a walk in a park. Getting out into nature is a proven creativity booster. And if you don't work near a park, simply looking at an image of nature actually has the same effect. Two, stare at an image that you associate with originality or creativity. For example, research has shown that when people stare at the Apple logo, they boost their creative output. Three, do some exercise. Researchers have found that just 30 minutes of aerobic exercise boosts our ability to solve problems more creatively. And this effect lasts for up to two hours after we've finished our exercise. Any of these simple techniques will help your great ideas flow. Coming up, swapping the football field for the kitchen. The retired AFL player living his dream. I'm Kenton Campbell. I'm the founder of Zarafa's Coffee, and these are my three tips. So tip number one is never leave your partner behind, whether that's your wife, your husband, or your significant other. Make sure you take them along the whole journey. Otherwise, it might split. My second tip is reinvest. A business that doesn't reinvest every single year, year on year, is a business that will fail from that moment. Make sure, though, you plan for that reinvestment. If you overinvest, that could be your undoing also. My key, whether it's time, energy, or money, or a combination of all three, make sure you plan and continually look to innovate or reinvest. So my third tip is passion. Passion is not there for when you're up. It's for when you're down. It's for the mornings that you do not want to get up. Make sure you hold on to that. Bottle the lightning, because you're going to need it. To be a stayer, not a player, passion is for when you're down. Have you ever done a grocery shop and then find yourself throwing out unused fruit and veggies? Well, research shows about 20% of food purchased from the supermarket goes straight into the bin. Well, an entrepreneur is trying to overcome that kind of waste by delivering the right portion of groceries to your door. We deliver fresh produce directly from our farms, straight to people's homes. We portion all the food out to exactly what it is that people require to be able to make a meal. We can do a meal for one person, we can do it for a family. You can either come on and be a subscriber, which is a meal plan that gets delivered to your home every week. We give people the option as well, if they just want to come in and trial us and then go again. A lot of people that use our service are executives and they do a lot of travel. They might not be at home every week, so they just want to come in and try things. Every meal comes with a recipe card. Most of those recipes have at least six steps to follow, so they're really easy. Minimal pots and pans, all designed to be cooked within 20 minutes. Also, within our market store, you can just come in and buy some wholesale meat, which we're finding is really, really popular. With the prices of fresh produce and things at the moment, for a family of four to buy, you know, premium beef and things like that is really expensive. And rather than paying you know, seven or eight dollars a steak, they're only paying four or five dollars a steak. Main inspiration behind the business was just an eager want from myself to be able to provide really healthy meals. So from my background, as far as playing football or professional football, I met a, a good friend of mine in Bruce Lennon, who we've gone into partnership with, with another friend that we've met through sport affiliation in Darren Thomas, the CEO of Thomas Foods International. We approached Darren and said, Darren, you've got great produce, which he exports to all these places around the world through Thomas Foods International. We would like to take that produce and give it to mums and dads so they've got the opportunity to be able to eat healthy, nutritious food as well. So once we'd gone out and proven the business, and then we sort of stood back and said, what is it that people really want? They really enjoy the convenience and how can we take it one step further? So looking at global trends, we saw that the meal convenience provider packs were a bit of a global trend. So we sat down, reassessed what we were doing, and we ended up developing Thomas Farms Kitchen, 
and that's where the, the meal kit delivery service started to come into play. What separates us from the Marley Spoons and HelloFresh in the world is we're a 100% Australian-owned business. We also source the food within our own business, so we know that the biosecurity of the quality of the food is coming directly from Australian producers and they're also coming from sustainable farming practices as well. We can provide our customers with over 6,000 locally sourced ingredients and deliver them directly to people's homes. There's a lot of external factors that can make or break you in this game. And if you don't have that right, yeah, it can all come down like a house of cards really quickly. The things I would have done differently is probably started a lot earlier. The more I get involved into the business and into the farmers and looking at the opportunity, the opportunity is great, it is huge. So online grocery sales within the UK is expected to grow by 47% by the year 2022. Over in the US, they're expecting to grow by 123%. And over in China, they're expecting to grow more than 285%. So that's over 11% of total grocery sales will be made online. As far as those sorts of predictions, being in this space is really, really exciting. The other thing is it's a very, very agile space. Unlike bricks and mortar, it can change all the time. So to be at the forefront of that is really, really exciting, but it also has a lot of challenges. Such a great business concept. Coming up, ask Koshi. You throw me a question, I'll do my best to answer it. A CRM system is a fantastic way to supercharge your business. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, and in the simplest terms, a CRM is designed to give you a complete view of your customer. Now, Salesforce is the leader in CRM software, so let's take a look at how it can help you reach your business goals. First, finding a new customer is essential to any business. However, with traditional tools, it can be difficult to gain truly meaningful insights about them. Salesforce helps you understand who the customer is, what they need, and shares this information with staff in real time. Of course, getting leads is one thing, but winning them is another. And the manual overhead of using Excel tables and Outlook to achieve this can be counterproductive. Now, with Salesforce's automated processes, for example, leads data can travel from a form on your website to a salesperson or agent all automatically. Think of it as another team member. Any business should consider a CRM, so why not give it a try with a free trial of Salesforce Essentials, which takes the full power of Salesforce and tailors it for the unique needs of small businesses. It's Ask Koshy time. This week, a business got in touch looking for clarity around research and development tax incentive changes. Hi, Koshy. My name's Nicole Lander, and I'm the Chief Fun Officer at Laser Tag in a Box. We rent laser tag equipment all over Australia so you can have the party at your house. So as well as renting it, we actually make the equipment and sell it all over the world. My question is, I've heard that the government has a recent change to the R&D tax incentive. I was just wondering what this change to the research and development tax grant will have against uh, on my business. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for getting in touch. You are right. The federal government did recently make changes to the research and development tax incentive. It decided to introduce an intensity threshold to recognise companies that invest significant amounts in R&D expenditure as a percentage of total expenditure, which I assume you do. Put simply, the government has tightened the qualifying rules which will reduce the level of R&D tax offsets available. So, Nicole, how will these changes affect your business? Let's say, for argument's sake, you have a turnover of just under $20 million, incurred expenditure of $10 million on eligible and core supporting research and development activities. Under the old rules, you would have been entitled to a refundable offset of 43.5% of $10 million spent. Under the new rules, Laser tag in a box will only be entitled to an offset of 41% of $10 million spent because you would have an ordinary corporate tax rate of 27.5%. Now, on top of this, you'll only be entitled to a maximum cash refund of $4 million and will have to carry over the balance to the next financial year. 
You also have to take into account new rules for compliance activities. It'll probably be more time consuming and costly for taxpayers to access these reduced R&D offset entitlements. Frankly, to put yourself in the best position, you should seek advice from an accountant who has relevant R&D experience. You might also want to consider employing someone to manage the R&D registration process and make sure you file all internal documents to support your activities. I'll be getting on the phone to your accountant if you haven't already done so. I hope that helps. And don't forget, if you have a question you'd like answered, be sure to send it in kbb at pinstripemedia.com.au and I'll do my best to answer it. Well, that's it for this 11th series of Koshy's Business Builders. It's gone in a flash, hasn't it? Thanks for joining us. I hope we've helped educate and inspire you along the way. I'll be back in a little while with series 12, but don't forget, we're always online through the KBB website and our email newsletters to constantly keep you up to date and keep you inspired. So why don't you subscribe now?